Let's learn how to measure an unknown resistance with a voltage divider and an analog input, and along the way, learn how to maximize the sensitivity and range of the measurement. Here's the basic idea. Suppose you have a resistive sensor whose value is Rx. I'll place that in combination with a fixed resistance R in a voltage divider arrangement based on the supply voltage VDD. Rx is an unknown resistance again, and R is a known resistance. Now the voltage that appears across the known resistance is our primary measurement, we call that Vx. And you can also measure your supply voltage VDD to improve the accuracy of the overall measurement. Now this voltage Vx would be applied to one of the analog inputs on my Rio, say analog input 0, and then the other analog input gets used to measure your supply voltage VDD. You will also want to measure the fixed resistor with an ohmmeter, but make sure you do that before you connect it into the circuit. Once it's in the circuit, you don't want to apply the ohmmeter. Alright, let's see how we can get the voltage divider equation to emerge from this circuit arrangement. Perhaps to keep things a little bit easier to understand, I'll go ahead and draw in the, the battery that's implied by the connections to ground and VDD. At this point I'll dispense with those symbols and then recognize that the voltage of interest here, Vx, is the voltage with respect to ground. And that's the voltage that appears across R. Now our voltage divider equation works this way. We say, write the resistor value in the numerator that's associated with the voltage of interest, and then divide by the total series resistance connected to the battery. We then multiply by the battery voltage. And that's our basic voltage divider equation for this circuit. Now Vx will range anywhere from 0 up to Vdd. We can say that whenever Vx reaches Vdd, it's at its maximum value, and we can call this 100% of a full-scale reading. For this reason, it will be a little easier to recast this equation in terms of percent full-scale. And I'll do that by dividing both sides of the equation by Vdd. Now I have a dimensionless ratio of two resistances. We can then multiply that by 100%. I'll abbreviate that as percent full scale. All right, next I'd like to rewrite the unknown resistance relative to the fixed valued resistor R. And I'll do that this way. Let me extract this piece and recast this as Rx divided by R times R. So I have not actually changed anything, but now I've got it relative to R. Notice that three R's drop out of the equation altogether and we're left with this simplified form. Go ahead and put that back into my percent full scale equation. And this is really still the same thing as the voltage divider expression, but just rewritten in a little bit more convenient form. Now, if you apply some algebra, you can solve for Rx, and then you end up with this result here. And this works when you measure the actual percent full scale, and you want to recover the resistance. I can do the same thing by solving the voltage divider expression for Rx. In either case, my Rio will calculate Rx based on the measured value of Vx, our previously measured value of R, and then assuming that we're taking a measurement of Vdd, we put that into the equation as well. Now let's consider what happens to Vx for different values of Rx. To get started, let's look at Rx much lower than the fixed resistance R. In this case, the resistor ratio goes to approximately zero, and we're left with 
essentially 100% full scale. Alternatively, if we were just looking at VX, we would see that VX is at VDD. Here's another case. Supposing Rx happens to be exactly equal to the fixed value resistor R. In this case, Rx over R is 1. We're left with 1 divided by 2 times 100%. That would be 50%. Half full scale, or Vx would be VDD over 2. Finally, if Rx is much larger than R, then this term dominates the denominator and everything tends toward zero and the output is approximately zero percent full scale. So thinking about these three different cases we can conclude that Vx goes down as Rx goes up. Now th this is not the only place that you can put Rx. In fact we could flip these around and I'm not going to rederive everything, but I think you can appreciate that if I swap out these two values, we expect Vx to go up as Rx goes up. And then we can essentially take these set of equations, interchange the positions of R and Rx, and we get equations that are pretty similar except for some minor differences here. Just point out some of those. This looks like the reciprocal of that one, which suggests that this term must be the reciprocal of that term right here. Let me use the common denominator of percent full scale. I think it becomes more clear then that this is in fact the reciprocal of this term down here. All right, let me put those aside. Those are all the basic equations you need to recover resistance from the measured value of Vx. Now let's turn our attention to maximizing the sensitivity and range of the measurement. And this impacts our decision for the fixed resistor R. Here I'm plotting percent full scale output as a function of our normalized resistance Rx. I have my two curves, one for Rx in the top branch and the other for Rx in the bottom branch. Let's look at the sensitivity issue first. When we say measurement sensitivity, it really means how much change in Vx do we get for a given change in Rx. And clearly from this graph, we see that we get large changes on the left side, but small changes on the right side. And it really relates to the slope of these curves. We're looking for higher slope to indicate higher sensitivity. So in this region where we choose Rx to be relatively low compared to R, we have higher sensitivity. So highest sensitivity is uh, obtained whenever R is large compared to Rx. But let's also consider the range of our measurement. Suppose we have selected a very large value of R compared to Rx. Well, we're already at 90% full scale here, so that means that as the Rx value changes, even somewhat, we are pushed right away against the 100% limit, and we just don't get very much range. In a similar fashion, if we were down here at a 10% reading, then it doesn't take much, and then we're already at the 0% range. So from a symmetrical range standpoint, the best you can do is to pick the value of R to match your value of Rx at your intermediate or nominal value. So to summarize, we say that select R to be the nominal value of your Rx value for maximum range and good sensitivity. Now here's another situation. Suppose you know that your resistance Rx has some minimum value and it just gets larger. In this case, we would like to maximize the sensitivity and the range at the same time we can do that by choosing R to be roughly 10 times the minimum value of our unknown resistance, and that maximizes our sensitivity and range.